Harris, and I'm the Electric Vehicle Program Coordinator with the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy. And we are here today to do a virtual ride and drive with the Tesla Model 3. Um, so while we are still um, social distancing with, with COVID, um, my family got together to be able to show you what a ride and drive would look like. So this is my husband, Jeff, who's going to be doing the driving. My son, Andrew, is doing the filming, and we're going to take a loop. So let's take a look at the outside of the car first. Um, to control the car, I have a app on my phone. So I click on the little Tesla app and it allows me to um, adjust controls, show me where charging is. Um, I can summon the car all with my, my phone. But there's also this key card so that in case the uh, phone goes in the pool or something, we can still get into our car and, and drive it. So um, to get into the car, pretty easy. Put your thumb on this portion here and then you just kind of grab it and pull out. I want to show you what the um, front trunk or the front looks like. So I'm going to hit controls and then I'm going to hit front and it's going to ask me, are you sure? Yes. And then it pops the trunk open so you can see what that looks like. Voila. There's no engine there. There is no engine there. <laughs> and then We'll walk around and see the back of the car. Again, I will hit the app trunk. Are you sure? Yes. The trunk is, and then there's extra space there. So no spare tire. If you have a lot, you've got to call Tesla roadside service and they'll come get you a new tire. All right. Should we go for a ride? Let's do it. All right, let's go. All right, so we're here in the interior of the car and the car is on. So you can hear how quiet it is. <laughs> I don't hear anything. <laughs> Correct. Um, and the car starts automatically when you have the app on or you can put the car key down here in the front and then that, that turns it on as well. Um, so to get yourself set, let's adjust the mirrors and make sure you're comfortable. Um, so you hit the little car and then you hit the mirrors and then it's this knob here. So it scrolls up and down to, to raise it. And then you can also turn it side to side with your thumb. Got it. All right. And then we'll adjust the right mirror. It's the same button. Same button. All right. Perfect. Great. And then do you want to adjust the steering wheel? Uh, Let's no, show, well, let's show people how you do it. Right. So you hit the steering wheel, and then it's that same button, and you can toggle it up or down. I can go then, in or out. Too. Correct. Oh, that's nice. Very good. Comfortable? Yeah. All right. All right. And then the only other thing is this is the only manual thing in the car. So your rear view mirror, if you want to adjust that. Um, so to to set to to go somewhere, you basically push up on the stock. It puts it in reverse, and then you can see the big rear backup camera and also the side camera. So there are five cameras on the exterior of the car that are filming all the time. And actually, it's pretty cool. Um, when you put it into drive, push down, just so we can get the camera to go in and show it. This little button here um, is showing that it's recording. So Is that what that red dot means? Correct. So. Um, it's called dash cam and the entire time the car is running, um, it is recording and then it's actually saving the images, the video to this memory card here. So if you're in an accident, you can actually pull the memory card out and watch um, what the cameras uh, filmed. Great. And then this is the um, port for charging your Android phone or your Apple phone and your Android phone. So kind of cool close that up but if you if we want to get going then um, we can just navigate so let's say we want to go to Sunset Beach we just type in Sunset Beach it's 3.2 miles away and it will give us turn by turn directions here and away we go so um, to push up on the stock to get in reverse I'm in reverse and then away we go so one of the things that people love about electric vehicles is the instant torque. So there's a single speed transmission, so it just has this get up and go as soon as you put your foot on the accelerator. So we are going to test that out right now as soon as we get a clearing in the traffic. 
So this car accelerates faster than most gas cars? That is definitely true. I'm going to try it right now. All right, here we go. Wow. Isn't that great? Wow, that is quick. Yeah, so um, even, so all electric cars have that instant torque. Even uh, like my Nissan Leaf or a Chevy Bolt, they all have that real quick get up and go. Um, and you don't feel that jerky feeling um, when you're getting into No, it's very gear. smooth. Yeah, it's a real smooth, quiet ride. Let's talk about the cost to fuel this car. So um, it's not being fueled with gasoline, it's being fueled by electricity. Electricity is a lot longer than, than gasoline. So it costs about three and a half cents per mile to drive an electric vehicle. And it costs about 10 cents per mile to drive a traditional gasoline car. So it's, it's a lot cheaper. If you want to go a thousand miles, it would be about $35 in fuel costs. Whereas that same trip would be um, close to $100 in, in, with, with gasoline. Wow. What about oil changes? No oil changes. So there is no uh, engine, so there's no oil to change. There's also um, not any of the spark plugs or any of the moving parts. So the maintenance on an electric vehicle is much, much uh, cheaper and infrequent than with a traditional car. So we want to show how the car has the um, semi-autonomous driving feature. And the way that it works is it's reading, the, the cameras on the outside of the car are reading the lines of the street and also reading the vehicles in front of us. So when you have this little symbol on, you tap twice on the stock and then it will stop on its own. So it's slowing down on its own. So I'm not touching the brake, it's doing it. Um, it feels the car in front go. So it's going to come up to the stop sign and stop on its own. Do I need to tell it to go now that I'm, yes. when's my turn? Yes, so tap, hit the gas a little, and then it came off, so we'll go ahead and put it back on as soon as it reads the symbol. There we go. And it's going to match the speed limit, but we're gonna turn it down just a little bit just by scrolling on this button here. And then it should be able to read the lines and stay within the lane. So I'm not touching the wheel, it's driving right now. Right. And we're gonna, we'll turn it down just a little bit more, drop the speed a little bit more, even though the speed limit is 30. And then watch how it takes the turn all by itself. Wow. Isn't that great? It's and then you can speed it up a little bit by hitting the button here again. So you don't even have to use the accelerator. You can just drive with it. And the, it knows there's a car up there. It, it does know there's a car up there. It knows the speed limit is 20, it, is, it knows what the speed limit is, and it's, Keep us in those lanes. We'll wow. turn it down just a little bit so we can go around the curve. And then there's a speed bump here, so we'll turn it down a little bit more. There we go. Let's we'll see how it does on the bridge. Way down. So as the driver, anytime I want, I could take over. Absolutely. So to take back over, you just grab the steering wheel or put your foot on the brake or tap up on the stock. But either way, it can all three will disengage the autopilot. Doing a pretty good job, huh? It does a very good job. Maybe a little better than me. <laughs> One of the benefits of electric transportation is the lack of emissions. So there's two different types of emissions that we're talking about. One are greenhouse gas emissions that um, that amplify climate change, and then there's also um, criteria pollutants that are harmful to human health. And those come off of um, you know, burning and combustion. So there's no tailpipe. So we don't have any of those emissions being emitted at the, at the car level. Um, obviously there are some emissions though associated with um, the electricity to, or the, the generation of the electricity to fuel the car. So obviously, you know, at a, at a power plant, there are emissions coming off of that that are tied to the car because you need those, um, the electricity to make the car run. And some power plants are cleaner than others. Absolutely. And that's the thing, that even with the dirtiest coal power plants, the emissions generated to fuel an electric car are still 
under half the emissions that a regular car generates. And the cool thing is a lot of the utilities have committed to 100% renewable power within the next 20 or 30 years. So as the grid keeps getting cleaner, electric vehicles are continuing to get cleaner as well. So here we are at our destination at Sunset Beach and uh, we'll pop out and, or we'll, why don't we park and then I can show you some of the other fun things about the car. So I wanted to show you some other features here. So obviously there's, there's no odometer or any, you know, dash or anything other than this right here. This is where you see everything. So this shows you um, how many miles you have left of driving. This is a long range uh, Model 3 Tesla. So it has 310 miles when it's fully charged. This is showing um, the battery pack along the bottom of the car. And then those are the dual motors. This car only has the rear motor. Um, so this green is showing how charged it is right now? Right. So we have 156 miles until um, we would need to charge again. And you can change the um, amount that you want the battery to be filled up to. So it's not healthy to charge it all the way up all the time. So when you're daily driving, you typically set it to about there, hit done, and then um, you can open your charge port. To find a charging station, you hit the little um, charging button here and it shows all of the red dots. So those are actually um, superchargers or a DC fast charge. So we showed people the, the ways to charge with a regular 110 or a 240 line the, with the um, level two charging. This is DC fast charging. And so, so it's even faster? It's even faster. So when you're wanting to, you know, say go to Tennessee, you can literally just type in Knoxville and then it will show you all of the charging stations that you need to charge at and tell you how long you'll be charging there. So we would stop in Ocala, we would stop in Tifton for 30 minutes, Atlanta for 35 minutes, and then we're in Knoxville. But that's if we started now when we're only halfway charged. Right. We probably wouldn't have to stop as many times if we were fully charged when we left. Correct. So um, these, like I said, are the DC fast chargers. It also shows you, when you click on the little button, all of these little gray dots and the little gray dots are level two chargers. So those are community charging that, that you can find out about in town as well. So you never really are um, without a way to charge because the car tells you all of the different places and it actually navigates for you and tells you how to get there. So if I click on the Clearwater supercharger, it literally will show me how to get there turn by turn directions. So some people mostly charge at home, but other people use the various charging stations around town. Exactly. And then there's also apps on your phone that you can use. So if you don't have a Tesla, like we have a Nissan Leaf, I can use the app on my phone that shows me where the charging stations are as well. So that's charging and navigation. I also want to show you some of the silly things that, um, that Elon Musk decided to do. So if you click on um the little button here you can do entertainment and these are all video games that, or chess that you can sit and play when your car is in park <laughs> or you can sit and watch netflix or you can also and this is really kind of fun you can do um toy box you can do is that what I think it is? It is exactly what you think it is. So <laughs> you can. That's a whoopee cushion. They put a whoopee cushion and you can move the whoopee cushion around. You can <laughs> change the sound. What is this? It says romance. So this is called sexy mode. So it literally puts the heat on, which is really hot right now in Florida. And, and there's a fire in the fireplace. Fire in the fireplace for you. That's great. Isn't that hysterical? You can also, if you want, you can start drawing on your wow. Tesla. 
So tons of fun, fun things to do with the toy box. And then there's also um, the internet. So if you want to search the web, you can do that. And take us to tesla.com so we can see other merch. And then the music is a lot of fun too. So you can um, choose music from your phone or you can also go from playlist or you can go from radio, you can stream or if you want to do karaoke, you can literally make the Tesla a karaoke machine and have a rock out session in the car. Have a karaoke party in the Tesla. But knowing how you sing, we are not going to subject <laughs> folks to that today. I need an auto singer like it has auto driving. Exactly. Okay, so we're going to talk about how you charge the car. So this is called level one charging or trickle charging. And it's basically an extension cord where one end goes into the car and the other is plugged into a regular outlet. A regular outlet, just like everybody has in their home. Right, so you can charge pretty much anywhere. There's a 110 outlet you can, you can plug in and charge your car. So um, you just plug it into the wall and then come over to the charge cord and plug it in. And then you add about five miles. So um, hold on, it's charging right now? Yep, it's charging. So you add about five miles per hour with this. So it's not a fast charge, but if you leave it overnight, you can add about 50 miles in the 10 hours that you're sleeping. So how much faster could you charge a car if you install your own charging station at your house? That's a great question. So we had an electrician um, add a 240 line. So this is basically the same type of outlet that you would plug your um, clothes dryer into. And then we just plug the device into that 240 line. And this um, gets us about 25 to 30 miles per hour added back on. So it's a lot faster to do the level two charging than it is to do um, the trickle charge. But it's just as simple. Um, you basically Unhook the device, and um, because it's not a Tesla charging station, you have an adapter, so you literally just clip it on like that, and then plug it into the car. Just like that. How expensive is it to install a level two charger? Another great question. So um, it, it costs about $150 to have the electrician um, drop the line. And then you can get a charging station for around $200 or, you know, up to $1,000, depending on what you're looking for. They're just like those um, thermostats at home that you can adjust with your, with your smartphone. You can charge them at different times of the day when it's cheaper, when the electricity is cheaper. So they connect to Wi-Fi. They can connect to Wi-Fi. Um, so there's lots of different um, bells and whistles you can get, but a basic one starts about $200. So one of the cool things about um, powering an electric vehicle is that the energy that it comes from can be renewable. So we've added solar panels to the roof of our house, and those obviously panel those panels power our house. And then because we're plugging our car into the electricity uh, from our house, the solar is also powering the car. So it's really generating zero emissions. We're basically driving on sunshine. Thanks for joining us. We hope that you uh, learned a few things, had some fun, and we're going to get to your question next. All right. Well, thanks for watching that video segment. We um, have a few slides to kind of help clear up some uh, of the points that were made during the video that we wanted to share, and then we'll open it up for questions. So please, um, it, you know, if you have questions, start typing them into the chat box and then we'll get to those in just a bit. So um, one of the questions that we get sometimes is what is an EV or an electric vehicle? And it's important that we're all kind of using the same lexicon. So when we're talking about an EV, we're talking about cars that um, can take electricity as a fuel source. So while hybrids are a better alternative to a traditional car, um, they still are fueled by gasoline. Whereas plug-in hybrid and electric vehicles, on the other hand, um, take electricity. So um, they, we consider those to be electric vehicles. And I wanna start my video again, so let me do that. Okay, 
and I also wanted to share, so we showed how you find chargers or charging locations on the Tesla, but if you drive a Nissan Leaf or a Chevy Bolt or any of the other types of vehicles, you can use um, two different sites to find chargers. So one is the Alternative Fuel Data Center um, that the um, Energy Office has, and they do a fantastic job of maintaining the website and making sure that all of the sites are current. So um, you can literally type in the type of charging station you're looking for, and it pops up all of those um, locations on the map. Another app is called PlugShare, and it has an app on your phone where you can type in um, the type of charging that you're looking for, and it's non-proprietary. So it shows all the different types of charging stations. And you can see there's really quite a bit of charging um, infrastructure that's in place. People frequently don't see it because there aren't big signs like a gas station, um, but if but they're there <laughs> if you're looking for them. Obviously, we always would like more infrastructure. Um, so when you're charging, I mentioned the level one, and I just wanted to, to reinforce what I had shown in the video. So you get about two to five miles added on. So it's not a quick charge, but it's a, it's a fantastic solution that I used for the first two years that I drove electric. We did not have the charging station installed in our garage, and I just used the um, trickle charging in the evening and night, and it, it meets your needs. Um, like I mentioned, level two charging, it's, it's higher amps, so there's more power going to the car, and that's why it charges faster. But it's the same shape as you have with the, um, with the triple charging. And then level three charging is the kind of charging that you typically find along the interstates for interstate travel or um, long distance travel. So it gets you that much faster charge. So it's DC power instead of um, AC power and it can recharge up to about 80% of the battery in about a half an hour. So um, Nissan and the Asian um, markets were putting in Chatamo um, shaped, which is on the right-hand side um, for DC fast charging. All of the American and European manufacturers have what they call the J1772 combo. So it's the same shape as the first two, and then it's this extra um, feature here that, that supplies the DC power. Um, Nissan has actually recently said that they're going to go away from Chatmo for American um, vehicles that they sell here in the States. So all of the DC fast charging will be this um, J1772 combo. Or like we showed in the video, Tesla has their own shape for level one, two and supercharging. Um, but they, like I showed in the video, there's an adapter. So if you have a Tesla and you want to charge out in the community, you just clip that little adapter on and um, you can still charge. So I also wanted to kind of uh, have a visual of what I was saying in the video in terms of the cost to charge your electric vehicle. So um, if you do add uh, regular charging on it, it will add probably between 25 and 40 um, dollars to your monthly utility bill, but then you're also not paying for gasoline. So it makes it a much more cost effective way to, um, to get your transportation needs met. Um, so like I was mentioned in the video, if gas is 225 a gallon and your car gets about 23 miles per gallon, it costs about 10 cents per mile to drive. Whereas with an EV, it's about three and a half cents per mile. Um, and then with solar electric, um, like I have the panels on my roof, it costs me about a penny um, per mile to drive. So really cheap way to, to get around. And then I also wanted to um, point out the emissions that I talked about in the video. So these are greenhouse gas emissions. And you can see that uh, and this graph is also from the Department of Energy, uh, their, their website. So nationally, um, based on the source of the um, generation of the electricity, uh, a big chunk of it is natural gas. You can see that driving an electric vehicle is well under half of the emissions generated. And Florida is very similar to the national average in terms of um, th those emissions um, data. So I wanted to show also some different models and um, their ranges just to kind of give you an example of what all the different types of electric vehicles that are out there on the market. People are pleasantly surprised when they start to learn more and realize how many different options there are. Um, so this website is called PlugStar and it's from our national partners at Plug in America. 
So if you go to the web star, plugstar.com um, and you type in your zip code, you can see all of the different models that are available for purchase and it arranges, you can sort it by what you're looking for. So um, what it does is it shows the range. So this is how far it will go on a single charge. And it also shows if the car is all electric, it's all orange, or if it's a plug-in hybrid electric, like the Toyota Prius Prime, it has this symbol that shows that it's half gas and half electric. So um, with the Tesla, or I'm sorry, with the Toyota Prius Prime, it's showing you that it'll drive 25 miles in all electric mode, and then it switches to um, the gasoline generator and can go an additional 640 miles. So. Um, I sorted it by price. So these are the price points with the um, federal tax credit added in if there is one available for the vehicle. So you can see that um, like the Ford, the hybrid um, plug-in hybrid escape, only $26,000. So it's lots of different price points to meet lots of different needs. Um, we have a Nissan Leaf and we also have a Chevy Bolt in our uh, families. Uh, vehicles and then um, there's the goes up to the Tesla and then beyond. So I just put a few examples here so that you can kind of see some different um, examples. And then I think another really important thing to consider if you're looking at buying an electric vehicle is considering used. So I bought a used Nissan Leaf in 2017. It was a 2015 model that had about 35,000 miles on it and I paid $8,400 for it. So extremely economic. And then in the you know, tiny amount that we're paying for fuel costs and the zero that we're paying for oil changes because there are none, um, it's, a, it's a very economic way to meet my family's needs. So this is from Car Gurus. And you can see that there are two um, models that are under $10,000, lots, um, lots of used options like that. And I think we'll open it up now to questions. So, um, Jen, if, 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 if any questions have come in, we'd love to uh, get some of those answered. Yes, indeed. Um, we have quite a stack here, so I'm going to go through them and um, please be patient with us because we have quite a few. Um, one of the first ones, which uh, it was asked by a couple of different people in a, in a similar way about, you know, what's the average price for this type of car, referring to the, the Tesla Model 3, which was the one that was test driven. Um, and then the sort of accompanying answer or, or question rather, was, well, Tesla is not an inexpensive vehicle. Um, how long do you see a return on that investment? Um, so, Dory, do you want to sort of answer the combined ones, you know, for those, what's the, the base? model price of this and, and um, how some of that adds up. So the base model on the Tesla is right around 40 and it can go up depending on if you add in the um, extra battery um, capacity so that it has the longer range. So the base model is about as a 250 mile range and then the extended Tesla has a 310, 315 mile range um, and that, you know, adds an extra $7,000, I believe, right now. So Elon and Tesla have, uh, <laughs> have a habit of changing the price points um, on, on some of the added features. So um, those, those may fluctuate, but um, also adding on the, the enhanced autopilot like we featured in the video, that adds an additional charge. So, um, And I also want to point out, there is actually technically a $35,000 based model of the Tesla Model 3 it isn't available on the website. So you have to um, you have to place a call with a with a local Tesla um, dealership. But but technically that is out there. But as Dory says, there are um, you know, this is specific to Tesla, but with all of the different makes and models out there, you're going to see different price points. You're going to see uh, different costs. The the sort of longer question there, um, which people frequently hear, uh, you know, what what's your return on investment? What do you see a return on your money? Um, that obviously <laughs> that that's a harder question to answer because it is based on so many factors. Do you drive? Do you drive, you know, a thousand or two thousand miles a year, or do you drive twenty five thousand miles a year? You know, and 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 those are both real numbers depending on who you are um, and what you do in life. So you see uh, certainly a return on your investment for many electric vehicles sooner rather than later because you, you, you don't have the maintenance costs. There aren't timing belts, there aren't fan belts, you're not doing 
um, oil changes, as Dory said, there, there are a lot of maintenance costs that, that simply don't exist. Yes, you still have to put tires. They're actually vehicles. <laughs> um, I am, oh gosh, I'm, I'm two weeks away from my fourth anniversary of being an electric vehicle driver. And lit literally the one investment we've made is we, we had to put new tires on. That, that was the one thing. Um, that literally the one thing we've done in four years. So um, your maintenance costs are considerably lower. You, you would have to go in and look at your paperwork. You know, what are average maintenance costs um, for the vehicles you've had. Um, so the how long before you see the return on investment, that, that's going to vary fairly considerably depending on the cost of the vehicle in the first place. But as Dory pointed out, with the used Nissan LEAF, she began seeing return on her investment, you know, almost right away because she effectively had free fuel um, and has had almost no maintenance uh, costs in her basically three years of driving it. Um, um, I, I just want to add to that briefly. Consumer yeah. Reports put out a great um, report uh, a couple months ago, and they were showing a, a savings of $10,000 over 10 years um, driving electric. So um, compared to a comparable vehicle, and they do compare side by side vehicles in that report. So it's a great uh, resource to look at. Absolutely. And I'm actually just going to drop the link to that in the chat here. Um, that was that was what they put out in October. So it was about two months ago. Really good article, really good report. Um, so yes, 10,000 10, over 10 years is, is, is pretty accurate there. Um, Another question, and this is sort of a related question. We're still in the money zone here. Um, Jenny asks, how much slide there that kind of began to get into the, the question of, of cost, but can you elaborate on that a little bit more? What are we talking about you know, per, per month? Um, what are the average costs for what's going to go on your power bill if you charge exclusively at home? You cut out just a little bit, but I'm going to go back to the slide um, to, there we go. Um, so, I mean, it, it depends obviously on how much you drive, but if assuming about a thousand miles per month, so 12,000 miles per year, um, these are the costs that you would incur. So about, it would add between 35 and $40 um, per month if your electricity costs are about 12 cents per um, kilowatt. So those are the assumptions there. Right. And and then also keeping in mind, um, you're not paying for gasoline, so obviously that is a reduction. And then, as Dory had also mentioned, no oil changes, no no fan belts, no timing belts. There are other costs that simply won't exist. So therefore, your your total cost of ownership, total cost of maintenance, uh, will be considerably less than the the modest increase in in your power bill. Um, we had a question from Alicia. She asked, "Does a hilly terrain affect?" the range, and, and I'm actually going to put a secondary question onto that um, for, for Dory or myself or another EV driver among our panelists to answer. Also, does extreme heat or extreme cold affect the range? Um, we frequently get a combination of those questions. Uh, Dory, do you want to start? Sure. So um, Jen is in Asheville, so they've got a few more hills than we do here <laughs> um, in Florida. But yes, it will put an extra pull on the battery as you're going uphill, but then as you're going downhill, it's recapturing and adding that um, energy back to the battery. So it's basically like cuts your losses uh, and, and it's about an even um, total on the, on the battery when you're going through hilly terrain. Um, in terms of heat and cold, um, when you are uh, using a lot of air conditioning in the summer in Florida um, with my Nissan LEAF, I will see a drop of about maybe four to five miles in the range um, because it's using that extra energy from the battery to cool the car. Um, I rarely put the heat on, um, but it does impact it similarly to the way that it um, decreases the range for the air conditioning. But one of the cool things about most of the electric vehicles is that they have heated seats and heated steering wheels. So that instead of heating the whole cabin, you're really targeting, you know, that contact, <laughs> which warms you up actually a lot, a lot better anyway, I found when I'm, you know, on the three or four days that I want to put the heated seats on in my zombie. <laughs> and I will say for people who are, you know, considering this and might be spending uh, time away from Florida when it's cold. So I, I have heated seats um, and I thought that that was a, 
sort of a, a, a silly indulgence and uh, I don't need this, but it was the only vehicle they had on the lot. So I had to take it. I'll probably never own a car without heated seats. And in fact, I would prefer a heated steering wheel for exactly what Dory just said. If the driver is made comfortable and unfortunately <laughs> here in the United States, many times a vehicle is being driven around with just the driver. So you are heating the entire cabin. I mean, you might even be heating the back place where the groceries are, where you actually don't want them heated. You, you want your groceries to stay cold, right? You're coming from the store. Um, it, it is so much more efficient and it, and it actually, it is, it is better in terms of efficiency for the, the fueling and, and better for the car in general. You're, you're just keeping the driver or, okay, you've got somebody in the passenger seat you can put on their heated seat. So that seems like a luxury, at least that's how I thought thought it was. Now I understand there, there really is a method to that madness um, and, and, it, and it has a big impact. So um, that's a good thing. <laughs> um, here is actually something related to weather and inclement that um, just popped up. So I want to go ahead and pull that into this part of the Q&A. Since we live in Florida, Denny asks, what happens to a Tesla, or we can expand it to any electric vehicle, if you happen to drive into a street with flooding that could go over the door sill? Are batteries sealed, and is there a possibility of electrocution? Very, very good question. That is a great question. And yes, the battery pack is completely sealed. Um, and I've actually spilled some water in the trunk of the Tesla and not worried at all because I'm like, well, it's sealed. So it's, and it just drains out of the, um, the back as well. Um, and I mean, obviously I don't think anyone would recommend anyone driving right. an unknown depth of water in Florida. <laughs> Um, in any kind of vehicle, but um, but there is not a fear of electrocuting yourself with with that, nor of charging electric vehicle. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I plug my car in in the rain and it just plugs in and it's you know it doesn't start the uh, pull of the electricity until it's safely engaged and the car communicates with the charging um, infrastructure anyway. So you're safe to, to charge in the rain and, and to drive through smallish puddles. But like I said, I wouldn't advocate driving any vehicle through a large puddle in Florida or anywhere. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> there is definitely a safety um, factor with, you know, the pull of the water, which has nothing to do with how the car is um, powered. Um, and, and somewhat related, I will say, you can absolutely take an electric vehicle through a car wash. Uh, you know, some people have wondered about that, like, oh, would it, would it somehow get into the charge ports, you know, because that's pressured water. Um, plenty of people, whether it's an electric vehicle or non-electric, don't want to go through car washes simply because they don't know about the scratches or, you know, wear and tear on the car. So that that's something to be mindful of. Um, but you can, um, and I can say I drove a Nissan Leaf <laughs> through a car wash plenty of times. So you just obviously have to be safe and have to have everything closed, but it should be anyway. Um, here's a fun question. <laughs> um, uh, Anna asks, does the sedan do a dance like the SUV? And what she's referring to is the Model X, which um, Dory actually had featured at the very beginning of this webinar. We, we do have a Model X in the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy fleet. It is currently in, in Tennessee right now. Um, and that one absolutely does advance the, the, the it's almost DeLorean, like the, the sides go up and, and the lights flash and it, it, it dances, it sings to a song. Um, Dory, I'm gonna let you feel this because I'm not 100%, I mean, I, I, I don't believe the sedan does, but um, I know there's some fun singing Christmas modes in all of them. <laughs> Right, so there are fun songs that you can play, but the only um, Tesla model that has those gold wing doors is the Model X. So with the Model Y, um, they kept the um, lower cost because it is uh, mm -hmm. uh, more of an expense to have the doors that go up like the DeLorean. Um, so they have the same doors as the Y on the, uh, as the three on the Y. So no, it doesn't do the fun little dance like the X does. But it still has the karaoke mode, so you can sit and do karaoke. <laughs> karaoke, and then and then you can set it on. Is it is it Santa mode or Christmas mode? Where it will it will <laughs> Rudolph. Uh, it Rudolph mode? Yes, and it'll sing and mutter, and it's it's great. <laughs> um, all right, so here is a more serious question: um, Can the car get hacked, and if so, what are backup measures? 
That's a great one. It is a great one. And it's obviously because it's all, um, you know, through Wi-Fi, the, the Tesla, I mean, so there's, yes, there is a, a risk of that. Tesla has gone above and beyond to uh, ensure that it's not happened. And they do work with white hat hackers to try to um, find weaknesses in the system and overcome them because obviously that's, you know, uh, an, a concern. Um, but one of the really cool things about uh, having the car um, on Wi-Fi is that it's able to do updates. So when they um, want to add software features to the car, you literally are pushed, uh, like your cell phone says, you know, there's an update available. Do you want to do the update? And you hit yes, and it um, can update the car so that the car is actually improving the longer that you own it, whereas most cars, as soon as you roll off the lot, that's as good as it's ever going to get. Um, one cool story is um, I was in a fender bender, so we took it in for repair. And when it was returned, um, it did not have the extended range on it. So when I called the service station, I said, you know, it's only got the 250 mile range instead of 315. And he said, are you near Wi-Fi? And I said, yes. And he's like, well, let me, I'll just do a software drop. And it added the uh, extra range back on. So it's pretty crazy. Um, and that was also what um, Tesla chose to do during um, one of the hurricanes for evacuation mm -hmm. and at the range so that folks would have more um, of an opportunity to evacuate. So there's, you know, there's plus and minus to having web-based um, features in the car for sure. Yep. Um, a related question we got, and I'm gonna encourage if people have more EV specific questions. Um, we've gotten to the bottom of the first stack here. Please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, uh, someone had, had asked similar to a question about return on investment for a vehicle, what's the return on um, investment for solar? And Dory did definitely talk about solar there and the fact that her family has solar and, you know, many municipal buildings are increasingly putting solar on and, you know, what are we looking at for that? Um, and, and I can just offer a very a very simplistic answer here. Um, you know, you often hear a solar payback here in the United States is about give or take eight years. Now that's that's a very general number because you've got the cost of installing the solar, um, and it depends on on your usage, uh, your energy consumption. You know, how much are you using? How much would you have written in checks for energy consumption in a year to get to whatever that break even point is? There's also tax credits and incentives that can change uh, your your paperwork. But give, give or take eight eight years is, is probably a, a semi-realistic number. Dory, I don't know if you have a more specific or newer number from our work with um, Florida Solar United Neighbors you want to share on that one. Well, I can just share my own personal story. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. we calculated it'll be between five and six years and we're in year two and we're on pace for that. So actually we're almost on year three at this point. So um, yeah, so our, our return on investment is a little bit sooner than what you mentioned. And part of it is because um, the technology is becoming so much cheaper. The battery cell or the solar cells themselves are coming down in, in cost dramatically. And that's very similar uh, what we're seeing with electric vehicles. So when, you know, when they started making them 10 years ago, it was about $1,000 per kilowatt hour for the battery packs. The cost is currently $140. So it's almost 80% drop in the price in the past 10 years. And most um, estimates are that when it's about $100 per kilowatt hour for to, to manufacture the pack, then it will cost the same to go to a dealership and purchase either an electric vehicle or a traditional combustion engine. So we're- And that's close. just, and just to clarify, Dory, that's the purchase price. That's the what you pay. That's not- <laughs> all of your maintenance, all of your fueling. So, so you're starting even and you're, and you're getting ahead from day one at that point with an electric vehicle, correct? Yes. Thank you for that clarifier. Yes. So we think that within the next maybe three years or four years, uh, it will be the same price, purchase price, uh, rolling off the lot to purchase an electric vehicle without any of the incentives. And they're currently... Mm -hmm. Is, um, I'll just mention the incentives while I'm on it. Um, there is a federal tax credit. So if you have tax liability and you can take the credit, 
of $7,500 per vehicle. Um, so Tesla, that's per vehicle um, based on the manufacturer. So each man, auto manufacturer, once they sell 200,000 cars, that federal tax credit starts to sunset. So Tesla has already sold more than 200,000 cars. GM has sold more than 200,000 cars. So they, those vehicles are not available for federal tax credit right now. Who knows with the new administration what those federal tax, what they might do with federal tax credits. Um, but currently all of the other manufacturers are available for the $7,500 federal tax credit. And it goes by the size of the battery. So even the tiny little plug-in um, vehicles are available for some um, federal tax credit. It may be um, closer to 3,000 depending on the size of the battery. Great, thank you for answering that because we often get that question in terms of incentives and tax credits and rebates. Um, it, all, it all adds up. Um, here is a uh, kind of a, a fun EV specific question, I guess. Uh, question is about valet parking. You know, how, how would you valet park? You don't, you don't have a key per se to hand over. Um, uh, although the, Anna does ask, can the card be duplicated like some scammers have done with credit cards? And as you pointed out, there's both the app on your phone and then there's that, that key card. Can you address that story? Yes, so there really is no chance of the valet going Ferris Bueller's day off with your car because um, <laughs> it's valet mode on the Tesla that you can put it in so that when you hand your car over to someone, um, it, it limits the, 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 their abilities to, for example, get into the glove compartment, things like that. Um, so you can either you know, give them the card or you can just put it in valet mode but on your phone app, you can see where the car is at all times. So if the car starts moving further than you would like it to, then you, then you know where, where the car is. So no fun scene from Ferris Bueller's Day Off circa 2020, <laughs> alas. Um, all right, now here's an interesting one, and I, I don't 100% know the answer to this, but you may know since you've had the, um, hands-free mode more, Dory. It says if a child were to run in front of a car when it is in the automatic um, hands-free steering mode and the car could not stop in its lane um, to avoid hitting the child or something else that suddenly appeared, what would it do? Would it change lanes? Um, or would it sense, in fact, that new presence? How does, how does that work with this newer software feature? Well, I think that with all of the software, you really can't just zone out and not be paying attention. I mean, if you saw it with Jeff in the video, his hands were right near the steering wheel at all time, ready to be a responsible driver and take over. Um, but it does have the ability to read um, passersby. It can, it can see pedestrians and it'll actually show them as little icons on the screen. Um, when they're in front of the car. And I have seen videos where it was in um, autonomous mode and started to go and then a car came through the intersection um, and before the driver could even react, it put the brakes on and, and actually moved the car out of the way to avoid the accident. So, um, and you know, obviously this is still in beta version and they're still testing and improving um, and all of the data, if you allow it to from the car gets fed back into um, the AI uh, that they're building. So constantly trying to improve on the autonomous features, which, um, you know, it gets better with, with all of the data sets that it has. Um, so I, I see, I, you know, just recognizing it for what it is. It still is, you know, we still are in kind of the early stages of all of this autonomous and um, at driving and um, it hopefully is gonna just continue improving. Thank you for that. And I will say I have occasionally through social media seen, you know, sort of a sensational video clip of somebody with it in autonomous driving mode, you know, not sitting in the, in the, actually in the driver's seat, you know, I mean, doing something kind of crazy and filming it. And, and I mean, obviously Tesla does not condone that. We would never condone that. I, that it, it, it very clearly says things like, you know, touch your hands to the wheel just to verify you're still here, you're still awake, you're still functioning. So um, it, it should never be done as a put your car on drive mode pointed towards Tallahassee and go to sleep for a few hours. That, that would never have been the intention. Um, but um, 
hopefully, hopefully uh, it will avoid issues like that. Last call for questions. We've had some really good ones. We've had, we've had some unusual ones, and then we've had some ones that are um, a little bit, a little bit more frequent in our in our roster. Um, I was just looking here to see uh, if there was, in particular, one. Uh, that comes up. Uh, this is, I think, this is a little less common now. But, but I will say, we still sometimes get asked, um, is there a weight for these vehicles? You know, over over years for electric vehicles um, in general, even even when the Toyota Prius first came out 20 years ago, you know, there there was sometimes a weight list. Um, and the answer is, well, it depends. It depends on lots of factors as to you know exactly which vehicle you're looking to buy, which make and model. Uh, Typically, there there aren't wait lists anymore. I mean, obviously there 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 are exceptions. Um, and if you're looking for something very specific, um, and you're 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 asking for some very special features, you, you might not be able to walk onto a lot tomorrow and walk off with the vehicle. But uh, generally speaking, uh, there are not six month wait lists. If if you've heard that, that's that's something from the past um, that is is certainly uh, changing. Um, but again, there are. As Dory pointed out, we have dozens of makes and models out there, and um, it is not an exaggeration to say hundreds more coming over the next couple of years. We we have certainly featured this particular vehicle right now because you you can't you can't do test drives in 12 different vehicles in a 20 minute test drive. Um, but we we definitely um, are are seeing a lot of range, a lot of of um, functions and features. Um, and uh, again, one more question, just just to confirm. So, how much does this car, the the Tesla Model Three, cost? So the the base price is thirty nine thousand. Although, as I said, you you can sometimes still access ones at thirty five thousand. But thirty nine thousand is considered um, the base. But that you know does not include where you're going to have the longer battery pack range um, and or adding on um, the the, the hands-free driving mode and there are other features and of course you can pay more for different tires and you can pay more for different seat trim and 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 just like you would for any vehicle right there's always a base price and then it goes up that that that's irrespective of the fact that it's an electric motor. Um, oh, and one last question here, right under the wire. Um, it says, "Is the battery? Oops, just went up. Is the battery still under warranty for seven years?" Um, and Dory, I'm pretty sure it's it's eight years. Actually, is that not correct? Yeah, it's eight years. Um, and I can't remember 100, the mile count. A hundred thousand miles. A hundred thousand. Okay. And that's pretty much industry standard. Right. So most electric vehicles, they warranty them eight years for the battery or 100,000 miles. Um, but what's exciting is that like a lot of the older Teslas, like 2012 Teslas, still are working on their original battery. Um, it may be that, you know, it's kind of like your cell phone. It's not like the battery just dies, like a traditional vehicle battery. Um, it starts to decrease. So um, some of those older Teslas still are at 90% of the original battery. So um, it's pretty crazy how durable um, they are. And I know we're right at the time, but then another question just came in about how much does it cost to replace a battery? And Dory, I just wanted you to field that very quickly because that is a bit of a, uh, I would call it a, 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 miss, a myth or a misconception that, that all of a sudden the battery is gonna die at a certain point and it's gonna need to be replaced. That, that is not in fact what we've seen. Can you address that really briefly before we wrap this up? Yes. So if you're over the 100,000 miles or you're over the eight years, then it's out of warranty and to replace it, it would be around $10,000. So it is an expensive replacement, but um, it's pretty infrequent that that happens before you're ready to purchase another vehicle anyway. Like most people don't own a car for 10 years and then anticipate, you know, not having to have some expenses uh, associated with, you know. So. Great. Well, <laughs> We could go on all day. <laughs> there are a lot of great questions, and and we, I, I would like to hand this over to Dory to wrap us up. But I'd like to say, if you have further questions, if there are questions in this program and department that come up, please feel free to to collect them and forward them on, because we consider this an ongoing dialogue. This isn't a once and done. Um, this is a process and a journey. Um, but we're really excited to partner, and we are so glad that you reached out to us. So I'm going to hand it back to Dory to close us off here. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, joining us today and being 
fantastic participants and asking lots of really uh, engaging questions. And I wanted to thank very much again, the South Florida Regional Planning Council for co-hosting today and inviting all of you guys to participate. Um, our information uh, about, if you haven't already joined us, we'd love to have you um, connect with us on our social media channels. Or if you want to receive our monthly newsletter, um, you can find the link at electrifythesouth.org. Um, and yeah, let's, let's stay in touch and keep the conversation going. <laughs>